Hi, welcome to Regular Guy DIY. I'm Jeff Moore, and today I'm gonna to show you how to replace the internal components of a mixing valve for a combination tub shower. You find these in a lot of homes, and eventually the internal components are gonna to start to break down, fall apart, and stop functioning. And what has happened in this particular case is that when you turn the shower on, the water's cold as it should be. And then as you progressively move the handle in the clockwise direction, the water should get warmer. The problem is the water doesn't get warmer until you get toward the end and then it's suddenly scalding hot, which is a little bit of a problem. So I'm going to show you how to disassemble the valve, how to replace the parts, and how to put it all back together. It's a very easy do-it-yourself project for anyone, nothing to fear. There is no, uh, you're not going to be working with any of the plumbing, just the valve internals are replaced for this type of repair. The one thing you do have to do is you have to be sure that once you start, before you start disassembling the valve, that you isolate the water to your bathroom or to the house. Um, whatever the main isolation valve is will work just fine. Open an adjacent faucet in the same bathroom just to let the water, residual water that's in the pipes drain out. And that way you'll know it's safe to disassemble the valve and take it apart without getting a face full of water. So here we go. To give you a quick overview of what we're going to do, we're first going to remove the handle. Depending on the manufacturer and design, uh, this one has a cap uh, that was in place that I removed. And then there is a Phillips screw in here that you just simply back out and the handle comes off. Other designs or manufacturers may have an Allen head uh, or an Allen screw underneath, in which case you just use your Allen wrench, loosen that up, and the handle will back off. Then there is this shield here that protects the valve stem. That will just slide off. Sometimes it takes a little bit of finagling to work it in. There is a rubber uh, seal around it to help hold it into place and to help keep moisture and water from getting back behind uh, the valve covering. So you just might have to work it a little bit to get it off. And then we're gonna remove this cap right here. You may or may not need to do that depending on the valve design that you're working on. This particular valve is a Kohler valve and I'm gonna put the part or the uh, valve part number in the comments section just so you know specifically what it is. But most of these are very similar. There's some differences in the in the uh, the way they're designed inside, or how the handle or the valve internals are removed. But generally speaking, if you can watch one of these and know how to work with a couple of tools, it's very easy to disassemble, find the proper internal components to replace, and pop it back into place, and then you're all set. So here we go. go and then the handle is just very easily going to slide right off. The next thing that we need to do is we need to remove this little cover right here. Uh, it's just held in there with a rubber gasket but this one's a little uh, a little bit stuck and being difficult so I'm going to use the wrench to just slowly work it out. And now that it's loosened I can just pull that off. And with the two screws off, we'll just pull this off. You may need a blade to cut the caulking to make that a little easier. So I had a little minor setback. The tile installer who put this tile in years ago covered up the screws that allow you to remove the valve internals. Now, I'm sure he had no intention of returning to this job and having to disassemble this valve, so he just did things that were easy for him when it came to cutting the tile. But uh, I've chiseled it away and ready to start disassembly now. Water's been isolated and we're going to take it apart. So, as you can see, the screws that were on the left and the right side here were removed. Okay, I replaced the outer control valve here after isolating the water. I left the internal parts in place. 
that wasn't necessary to fix this mixing problem. It was just in this piece here where the hot and cold water was not being properly blended to give you a good median temperature. So I just reversed the steps, put this back in place, tighten the two screws, turn the water back on. I've already tested it and now we're ready to reassemble the valve. Okay, I've reinstalled the cover uh, with these two screws here. They go into the holes that are at the top and bottom of the valve. And there is a top and bottom. This is pretty easy to see because the name Kohler's at the top, cold and hot. And at the bottom, there's a little bit of a gap opening just in case there's some water that might build up behind the valve just to allow that to drain out instead of being trapped behind the wall. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install uh, this little cap right here. This fits in, uh, just a little bit of pressure. There is a rubber around it and I don't have to twist it. I am just doing that to help get it in there. But, um, and that's nice and snug. Now we're gonna install our handle and we'll be done. Now that everything has been reassembled, we have one final step, and that is to grout the edge of this shower trim piece. To help make this a cleaner line, I'm just going to use some painter's tape and just run a nice, even A nice even line just so we don't have any excess All we need is just a thin little bead. Some of these angles can be a little challenging to work with when you have the long cock gun. As I mentioned, there's a small gap at the bottom of this trim piece that uh, we want to leave open just in case there's any residual moisture or water behind it. And that way it's not going to be trapped behind the wall. So. Pretty clean little thing, and uh, run my finger around just to smooth it out. And while it's still wet, we're going to take the painter's tape off. And there we are. Just need to let that dry overnight.